the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The third key that preserves revivals and the move of God across our territory is that there must be an open display of real miracles, signs and wonders that go beyond the church wall. There must be a manifestation of the wonder-working power of God in miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Bless this morning as I heard the stories of men and women we were told stories of people who defied death in your land. We were told stories of people who defied all kinds of things. Men who spoke to your seas and gave them borders by prophecy. Do not cross beyond. There must be a restoration. Let me tell you this. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe Jesus is alive. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe that Jesus is alive. John 4, 48. Please give it to us. John 4, 48. Read it please, you are a Christian and you can see it projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We live in a world today that is full of options. Options that bear the Christian faith to the face. We must present a Jesus with proofs. We must present a faith life that is attractive enough to compel all and sundry. The woman said, Come see a man that told me what I have done. When one man, man in Gadara, one man, man, God delivered single-handedly, his miracle was responsible for the salvation of ten cities. One miracle. Why are miracles important? They create convictions in the hearts of communities. Miracles create convictions. They help people know that Jesus is alive. Even if they refuse to acknowledge his lordship, they go back with their hearts burning within them. Are we blessed? This is why we need the anointing. Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. Acts 19, let's hurry up. Verse 11. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of the inhabitants of Bonnie Island. Go ahead, media. Next verse. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took it upon themselves to call over them which had an evil spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus saying we are joined by Jesus who Paul preached they thought it was magic and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. What happened to them? The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, Joshua Selman I know. 
He says, who are you? That is why you are praying and preparing your spirit. There is a register in the spirit that is showing your consistency. It is not only angels that are seeing it, demons are seeing it too. You don't just come on stage and say, be healed, be delivered. Just because you read it in the Bible, there must be a track record of consistently building yourself in the spirit. Let's read on. We're reading to 20. Please give it to us quickly. The Bible says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Imagine that kind of reproach to the name of the Lord. That we are in a meeting like this, and you see me running out naked to the streets of God. What happened? They said, two fierce people under the influence of spirits and people outside keep hearing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and Joshua Selman is running out naked say I, I better run out naked than to die what a reproach to the name of the Lord the Bible says this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell upon them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19. Many of them which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and it was 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books. 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books because there was an open deceit of miracles, of signs, and of wonders. So mightily grew the word of God, and it prevailed. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for all kinds of people, Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, traditionalists, and every time they come to me, they don't care whether they're Christians or Muslims. They just say, we have heard. Let me tell you this, in the presence of real results, people will keep every excuse and every prejudice. The reason why people bring all those things is because they don't trust that your results will work. Are we together? Open display of real miracles. One of the things you are going to be receiving tonight by the grace of God is an impartation of grace for signs and for wonders. There has to be people in. We need to be hearing from all over this country. This happened in Bonnie. Just when we are about to reconcile, we hear that another one has happened. That a popular man, man on your street, while fellowship was happening, he made a mistake and touched the gate of the church. Just the gate. The power of God electrocuted him there. And he came and met him in his sound man. As that testimony is going on, then we hear again that three dead people from different points came back to life. Let me tell you this. You will pull a level of force that you wake up in the morning and find people kneeling in front of churches and say, I don't know who is the pastor of this church, but I, know I will not rise up from my knees. The God who did this, may he come and change my life. Listen to me. A hospital never goes to look for patients. They just put enough equipment and patients from everywhere, even if they cannot stand, they carry them and take them to that hospital. When you become like that hospital, men will defy everything and they will look for you. May it be like that for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. What is the fourth key? As far as preserving revivals is concerned, the fourth key is the intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. Bonnie Island, do not let your fathers transit in the faith if Christ tarries. 
without raising and raising sufficient young people. And the key is not to wait until you are old. I received a very humbling orientation. One of your plants here that to shut it down for 30 days, it takes at least two years of thorough preparation. That's how it must be. Fathers of faith in the land, may I beseech you by the mercies of God. Do not wait until you are 50, 60, 70. When you do not have that strength again, no. Let's begin to train the young ones from infancy. Have you seen how they train footballers in many countries? Many of you are football fans. You notice that when the professionals are coming, there are some young boys that also wear jerseys. Have you seen that happen? Those young boys you see are the great footballers, soccer players of tomorrow. They don't wait until those ones retire. Right from infancy, they identify them, give them scholarships while they are schooling, they are training. We will employ that same strategy. There must be people who are anointed to do children ministry in Bonnie Island. And don't laugh at them and feel they are just children. That person you are pushing away may be Samuel the prophet tomorrow, whose word will not fall to the ground. And all oh Eli, if you are not sensitive to train Samuel, when you are gone, Israel will have no priest and no prophet. One of the major assignments of a true father of faith and a true veteran of the gospel is that you must look back and see people you are reproducing your ideologies, your values, your disciplines, and your training. At every level, you can start. A father should not wait until his son is 18 years before he starts telling him this is right and wrong. In our stubborn world today, by 18 years, most things have become like metal in the head of the children. And age two, three, as you take your offering and take a seat, you give that same child, Junior, all yours, watch what daddy is doing. Daddy is going to sow into the, man, the, the life of the man of God. And you see the little boy do it. I come from the north and they practice this very strongly in Islam. Right from infancy, they begin to raise them with such fierce, unrivaled discipline. We must restore the mentorship of young people. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the thing is that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. It says the same, commit thou to faithful men who shall also be able to teach others. It's the reason why you must allow people to go through process in life so that they can learn the pathway. Don't just give people results without experiences because what they learn in the process is greater than the result. It is from the knowledge of the process they can mentor others. Are we together? When you are about to pray, let the children pray too. They can break their fast by 12 or even if it's 11 o'clock. But let them participate no matter how small. Let them be part of that history of growth and transformation. Train up a child, the Bible says, in the way he should go. That means you must know the way yourself, the way he should go. He says, and when he is old, he will not turn away from it. The next reverence, Bishop Ajayi Crowders, James Johnson, the next. T.L. Osborne, the next Kenneth Higgins, the next Ayo Babalolas must cast their process in Boni Island immediately. Immediately. Teach them to sit down and read books. When they are loitering around, tell them, young man, I love you and I love your destiny. You say you have the call of God upon your life. Your first assignment is not invitations to preach. Your first assignment is the cave of Aduna. That's where men are made. The stage is not for training. The stage is for execution. Go and sit down. Yes, I know you are a great man of God. Run away from anybody who does not have a history of service. That duty. People don't just become. Many years ago, I had the honor and the privilege of playing this keyboard you are seeing. 
I used to play for it, a, a prison ministry. They were part of the people who went to preach for Pastor John. Later, they get in prison. We didn't just become what we became. No. From one service, you are in a subgroup. You are joining like this gentleman now, doing something. One day in your little group, they will say, help us close the service with prayer. Then you will now bring what happened in your secret place to that prayer group. You will pray for 10 minutes and everybody begins to sense there's something about this man. Next time they will say, okay, we give you 15 minutes. And while that happens, God will be speaking to your pastor and say, the next time you see this man, when there is a meeting outside, give him five minutes. That's how people are trained. All this balloon success of getting up overnight is the reason why a lot of people rise up and crash down. When God leaves you, he supports you. But when you drop off, he will come down. Let us help younger ministers, but not condemn them. Let us speak to the fathers respectfully. The younger ministers will have a lot of mistakes. The younger ministers will have a lot of error. They have zeal, but they may not have wisdom. We must have the heart and the patience because also God helped us. We land on the job. He trained us, but nobody is ever trained enough. As you start, you will see the need for adjustment in character, in discipline, in excellence. Let's not be too harsh on people who are coming up. They may have prayer, the grace to pray, the grace to prophesy, but you may see pockets of pride here and there. Don't discourage them. The grace is genuine. Just call them to order and adjust the excesses. Because in discouraging them, the devil will give them alternatives. And tomorrow when they still become great without your influence, they will fight you. When I was about to start ministry, I wrote a letter to so many men of God across the globe. Then internet was not really, and then phones was, but I wrote a letter to many ministers. I believe for justifiable reasons, many of, many of them probably did not even reach them. But there was one man who replied me back. He replied me handwritten, and he became an common mentor up until his death, Dr. Miles Mondo. Right from Bahamas, a young boy wrote him. I said, this is what God wants to make out of my life. And I was surprised when the post office reached me. And I went and I saw a letter. Not that the secretary wrote and he just signed. He wrote it by himself and signed. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, as you lift me, grant me the grace that no matter how busy I am, let me also be able to look back and see someone who is coming up. Because this thing is a relay. Others ran it and gave us, whether we like it or not. War betimes a man who comes back and there is nobody to pass that baton. Listen to me. I have a meeting a few months, I would say, with a great servant of God in this nation. And he was telling me that one of the veterans of the gospel, I will not mention his name for respect and honor, he began to lament and said, Our days are getting close, and yet there are not sufficient people to collect these batons. The grace that made us to lift wheelchairs on the safe ground. There are not faithful people who have been mentored. Are we going to go to the grave like that? One of the men that I met before he went to be with the Lord, I remember he had met a lot of God's generals. And I asked him, I said, what did they say? And I remember him telling me, he said, Smith Wigglesworth told Mr. Sumron, he said, when you are old, do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men, train them, and pass this battle. Because you also, you receive it. Let me tell you this, whether we like it or not, the cloud is already changing across Africa. Oh yes. In the next 10, 20 years, there will be a complete spiritual shift in the continent of Africa in Christ's hands. It's not prophecy. It's what wisdom and understanding of the nature and the principles of life. But the question is that when we be faithful men, 
Gehazi would have been the one to receive that grace from Elisha. But his unfaithfulness and his greed robbed him of that opportunity. Younger ministers, please hear me. Let me beseech you by the mercies of God. Humble yourself. Remain in the wilderness until your season of appearing. This is for fame. This is for popularity. We must love God beyond it. God will lift you beyond your imagination. Do you know when I started ministry? I hope I'm not wasting your time. When I started ministry, I stand before the God of heaven. I did not know that they used to give people anything called honorarium. That when you preach, they can package sugar cane and uh, mango and banana in a bag and say, thank you for coming. It was never the motivation. It was a desire to see Jesus lifted. A desire to see Jesus glorified. I didn't even know that men used to have protocol and PA to move around and secretary. No! We were driven by genuine hunger. Unadulterated hunger. Please let's be careful those we listen to. Let's be careful what we hear. So that wrong seeds, many sincerely so, are not planted in us that corrupt our desire for the one. The purity of your motive is one of the determinants of your usability as far as territorial revival is concerned. You should not just be available, you must be useful. Number five. The third key for preserving territorial revivals is called influence. Now, this is the part that affects everybody. Influence. This has to do with God raising people and putting them in high places. Influence is very important. What is influence? The ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies and your value systems without using force, without using cruelty. is called influence. The ability to compel men to buy into your value system, to buy into your ideologies without using force, without using cruelty, is called influence. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Influence is very important. Right for reference, we may not have the time to read it. Acts chapter 18 from verse 10 to 18. Acts chapter 18, 10 to 18. We need influence. You must pray that the leaders of the oil companies, the captains of industry, the kings and the nobles in the land, you must pray that God captures their hearts. When a king is saved, his land is saved. When a CEO is saved, everybody under him is saved. Rather than trying to save people one by one, we must trust God to capture the kings of the territory so that the territory will come under the influence of Christ. The last point we are about to pray. What is the last key that preserves territorial revival? An open display of love. Hear me, body island. Hear me, body of Christ. An open display of love without preference, religious biases, or cultural biases. An open display of love. Not just love to Christians, not just love to church members. An open display of love without preferences, without religious biases, without cultural biases. Where we contribute to developing communities. We contribute to blessing people, Christians, Muslims, unbelievers alike. God is not the God of Christians alone. God is the God of all flesh. And we must be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way beyond the walls of culture, beyond the walls of religion. If we only show kindness and love to Christians, then there is a message we are communicating to non-Christians. There must be a dimension of the love of God that must be enjoyed 
by everybody in this island. So you can see a traditionalist, and even though he's not born again, and every opportunity you find, you preach the gospel to him. But then, listen carefully, you can shake him. How are you? God bless you, my brother. I'm going to church. Would you like to come? No, 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 I'm not going. Anyway, that's all right. I'll pray for you. You crack a joke, not that you turn as a shame on you. And he says, shame on me too. Love. There are miracles that happen to all. A major part of today was a downpour of rain. And I did not see the rain falling on Christian homes alone. I saw that the rain came upon everyone. Your sea here, your rivers are full of fish. The fish does not run away from unbelievers and go to Christian nets. It is a provision and the love of God to everyone. Whilst we ultimately pray and intercede and press that the entire land comes to Christ, we must be able to show love without prejudice. We must show love, pure love, love for people. It may be the love of God that is displayed that will lead someone who has no business giving his life to Christ. But he will say, look, I am not a Christian, but I love you. I've heard of what is happening in this church. I've heard of what is happening in this community. It's not just by giving food and all of that. Just a, a warm display of love that someone in the office is crying and you come to him and say, what is wrong? And he says, no, not my way. This whole thing, I'm tired of my life. And you don't look at him and say, you see, shame on you. I told you to come to Jesus. He will pay the price and don't pay You come to him and say, look, it doesn't matter what the problem is, whether it's your fault. Let's cry together. Let me help you clean your tears before. Have you eaten? And the message says, well, what church did you say you attend? I will tell you that later. Let's talk about Jesus and your own life now. And at the end of it, you will get to consider for as long as I live, I will follow your God. Your God will be my God. This is where many times we fail as great people. We do a lot of religious things. But when it has to do with showing love, we miss out on it. Six keys. Bonnie Highland. Practice these keys. And even after 30 years when we come here, we will still find, find the fire of revival for you. And if they ask you how come you have sustained it, just like you found the technology to sustain your environment and bring that space, put it as a template for spiritual growth. Teach it to the young ones. When the fathers are going and they see the clouds coming, don't just give people money as an inheritance or land. Give them this present. Teach your children. Teach your children's children. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Have a few minutes and we're done. How many of you here came with your prayer request? Did you come with your prayer request? Is it alright if I ask the ushers to just collate it? We are going to pray. We have a few minutes. We'll be very, very fast. If there are no ushers, let's just have one or two volunteers. And then just, you can just, all of you can pass your request to the, the last aisle. And then lift it up. Let someone just call. Let's collect it. Don't worry. Nobody's reading your request. It's between you and the Lord. But whilst that is happening, please I'd like you to open your minutes and thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight. If someone pray, please don't be distracted. Pray, pray, pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. The entrance of your word gives light, understanding to the simple.
for you to see the Lord. For some of you lost that must die to see the Lord. For some of you grieved must die to see the Lord. You are going to pray and say, Lord, I am available. Do not pass me as you move through this island. As you move through the nations, those falling from whatever region, whatever nation, I like to pray. Whatever you want to do, you pray, Lord, you can do.
Number two, I'm going to be praying and ministering the healing and the delivering power of God. Sadly, we may not have time to take testimonies because I understand you have a coffee and we must respect it. Number three, which is very important, there are graces and mantles that must follow someone in this place. Maybe not everybody, but I know for sure there are people who came here. You must carry something. And then number four, I had a vision early this morning. I was sleeping, very tired, and I was sleeping. And all of a sudden, in that vision, I was taken to your sea. And I saw what looked like a, you know how fishes come out, very big fish. Came out, out of the river, went back again. Came out the second time, went back again. Came out the third time, went back again. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, this is the Spirit that sits upon this territory. And we pray. Because there is a prophetic push that this land must receive. A restoration of the life, the fire of the gospel, the passion and the hunger for the things of God. I told you there are spirits that interrupt the program of God. We do all this within the next 10 minutes. Please let your heart be desperate. Now let me say this. If anyone is under the anointing, whether you are an usher or not, please be your brother's keeper. If anyone is under the anointing, we may not have time to bring them out, except if I ask so, just help them. Just lie quietly so that they don't enjoy themselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you ready to pray? Father, that which must come upon my life tonight to change my destiny and to set me on fire, I receive by faith. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Why not? 
to come stand before your maker. You're not standing before an altar. You're not standing before Joshua Stephan. You're standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to lift your right hand and everyone of you lift it high to the heavens. And I want you to say this prayer of faith after me, let it be from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting the point. Jesus is here. Tell me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, 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 Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. Tonight I declare that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, and my King. I receive mercy and forgiveness from every sin and every guilt and I also receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today and forever I am a child of God I am saved I belong to Jesus and I will serve him all the days of my life no going back, forward ever and backward never, in Jesus' name. Keep your hands in the Father, I pray for these ones. It's an honor to lift them before the throne. Tonight I ask in the name of Jesus, according to the authority of Scripture, that their sins are forgiven. And I declare that you are partakers of the life of God. You receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that you reign in life. I plant in you with hunger for the things of God. And I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. The Lord will raise you and cause you to advance. You will stand in all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now please all of you in concert, just move to my left, which is your right. There's a council of you with your hands. Let's celebrate them as we go. Please celebrate them as we go. Is that the best thing for us all? Thank you so much. Many of you are the custodians of the next revivals 
upon the Pony Island and from Pony Island across the nation, across the continent. I'm stretching my hands right now. Father, I'm seeing the number 38. There are 38 people here. The grace that is coming upon you is a, a grace for encounters at the secret place. Help them, please. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, help them, please. From the front to the back, my left to my right, Father, in the name of Jesus, as many as must drink of this grace, I declare may that fire fall on them now. Over upon the island, revival is arrived. Over upon the island, prophets, prophetesses, over upon the island, intercessors, arise by the Spirit. Is there a way you can bring these words out? These words are praying to you. This is you can't just bring them out. Just help them and pray. Fire is falling on people right now. The Lord is releasing places. There are women here, there are ladies that are going to be after the order of the God. Intercessors, worthy women, where are they?
There needs to be stamina. There needs to be endurance. I want to pray for you. Enter ministry requires stamina. There are arsenals from hell that will arise. It takes discipline. It takes stamina. It takes diligence.
This must be a new season of embracing ourselves regardless of the limitations. We are not all perfect. We are a project. But God has shown us mercy and we must carry that mentality and stand as one body, one Lord, one faith, and even one baptism as the Bible teaches. It is the same heaven all of us are going into. And so we must stand to see that the gospel advances, but we must stand as a corporate people and declare over the land. And so I have asked the servants of God representing the men and women in this land to come stand with me in agreement as we pray this one prayer. Your assignment is to agree and release your faith as we shout Amen. Are we in agreement? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We bring before you this entire island, Bonny Island, a land that you have loved, an island that you have invested your power upon. We speak right now by the Spirit to the spirits that operate across this territory. Lift up your hands, all ye gates, and be ye lifted, everlasting God. Let the King of glory have a triumphant entry over Bonnie Island in the name of Jesus. Vices that interrupt status quo. We judge you by the God of heaven. 
will be responsible men and women. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your young people. They will be responsible gentlemen. The place will be established on time. I pray for your women. May they be responsible ladies that become mothers, that become grandmothers. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the land. We command a reign of prosperity like never before. We pray for the sea. We command the sea. Let me pray for you. In the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. By the privilege of the election of grace, I lift my voice to the God who called me and sent me. Standing in partnership with every man of God here, may the blessing that the Lord has placed on my life, may it rest upon your life. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 